Hi, my name is Brittany Corey, and I am a senior at Carroll College with the Health Sciences Department. This past fall, I conducted a systematic review regarding deep brain stimulation as a possible treatment for Alzheimer's disease with Dr. Gerald Schaefer as my advisor. To begin, we ought to get an idea of the threat that Alzheimer's disease really poses to our society and more specifically to our health industry. Alzheimer's disease is the sixth leading cause of death in the United States, with over 120,000 people losing their lives to it in 2017. It is a form of dementia that presents itself primarily among the elderly population, and in 2020, Alzheimer's and other dementias were estimated to cost the nation $305 billion. The mortality and costs of this disease are only going to be increasing along with our elderly population in the United States due to the aging generation of baby boomers. Because of this, there is a growing concern that Alzheimer's disease will put both an economic stress on the country as well as an industrial stress on the medical field. This is suggested by the Alzheimer's Association who found that 50% of primary care physicians do not believe that the medical profession is ready for the growing number of people with Alzheimer's or other dementias. Currently, the treatment for those with Alzheimer's disease includes what are known as cholinesterase inhibitors, which stop the breakdown of acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is a brain chemical thought to play a role in memory and thinking. So if we preserve acetylcholine by inhibiting its breakdown, we should be able to preserve memory and thinking. Cholinesterase inhibitors have common but mild side effects such as nausea, vomiting, fatigue, and weight loss. Despite this being a widely used form of treatment, not much is known regarding the underlying causes of Alzheimer's disease and the relationship between acetylcholine and cognition. Risk factors for Alzheimer's disease have been identified as age and family genetics, which unfortunately are not things that we can change. Alzheimer's is a neurodegenerative disease, so there is a loss of neuron function, which leads to cell death. Ties have been made between this degeneration of neurons and cell death with what are known as plaques and tangles. Plaques are abnormal clusters of protein fragments and they build up between nerve cells inhibiting communication, whereas tangles are twisted strands of another protein. As Alzheimer's progresses and your cell death continues, the brain gradually loses its overall mass and uh, cognitive function. The degradation of cognition results from this widespread disturbance in the function of circuits and networks involved in thinking. To combat the, synap the synaptic dysfunction, a novel approach to treating Alzheimer's disease is deep brain stimulation, also known as DBS. DBS is thought to improve the symptoms of selected neurological disorders by modulating activity within dysfunctional brain circuits. And it does this through an implantation of electrodes at the fornix. The fornix is a C-shaped bundle of nerve fibers within the brain associated with the hippocampus, which is thought to play a major role in memory. And um, you can see uh, this diagram right here, the fornix. So it's this C-shaped bundle of nerve fibers uh, deep in the brain. And that's where these electrodes are going to be implanted. Overall, the goal of this systematic review is to assess deep brain, stimula deep brain stimulation trials that aim to determine the efficacy in yielding or reversing the effects of Alzheimer's disease through a circuit-based approach. Some studies have seen an enlargement of the hippocampus after deep brain stimulation when compared to those people with Alzheimer's who would classically exhibit uh, progressive atrophy or wasting of the hippocampus. While there is not a certainty in the efficacy of DBS as a treatment, such findings would indicate a need for further research. 
And although the idea surrounding deep brain stimulation has been attenuating memory loss, future efforts could be focused on behavioral effects as well. Moving on to the methods, um, articles used for this systematic review were found on the databases PubMed and CINAHL in September and October of 2020. The original search revealed 14 articles, and after screening, I was left with seven research articles. Three were removed for duplication, and several others did not directly assess cognitive outcomes, nor the safety or feasibility in the surgical procedure of implanting uh, the electrodes of DBS. Within the seven research articles reviewed, the efficacy of deep brain stimulation was measured several different ways. First was through PET scans, which stand for positron emission tomography, uh, PET, and uh, PET scans are an imaging test that use radio tracers to visualize metabolic processes and other activities such as blood flow and chemical absorption. So when we're talking about Alzheimer's, metabolic function or lack thereof is going to be an indicator of cell death and possible atrophy. Efficacy of uh, deep brain stimulation was also measured using uh, an MMSE test, which stands for the Mini Mental State Evaluation. PET scans and MMSE tests uh, were frequently compared between Alzheimer's patients who had the DBS intervention and those who did not have the intervention. Um, so moving on to our results, the results of the articles reviewed showed that deep brain stimulation is a possible avenue for yielding the effects of Alzheimer's disease, specifically for those who are in the early stages of Alzheimer's. Six of the seven articles screened assess the safety and efficacy of deep brain stimulation implantation at the fornix. Four of those six studies found a strong correlation between increased cerebral metabolism and electrical stimulation as opposed to the typical decline in metabolism that we see with Alzheimer's disease. In one study, however, there was not a consistent improvement of cognitive ability despite that higher metabolism. They had um, compared outcomes for patients who had the stimulation turned off versus turned on over a period of 12 months. After the 12 months, the clinical outcomes for both groups were mostly similar, and there was no clear improvement of um, cognition for either group, whether the deep brain stimulation was turned off or on. And researchers noted that this could have been due to the use of patients under 65 years. And we can see that with um, this image right here. So this is using uh, a PET scan, a PET scan, and it's comparing one individual within the study who had the deep brain stimulation turned on over the course of 12 months. And you can see that their um, metabolic activity maybe has changed slightly compared from month one to month 12, but it was not a significant change. Uh, for the majority of the articles, however, deep brain stimulation was not only found to have a biological impact on cerebral metabolism, but appears to influence the rate of atrophy or wasting as well. Across uh, deep brain stimulation patients, mean hippocampal atrophy occurred at a lesser rate than the group with no intervention. Researchers theorized that the slowing of atrophy is correlated to deep brain stimulation through an increased metabolism. Those with, an early, uh, those with early Alzheimer's disease are thought to benefit the most from deep brain stimulation uh, because the integrity of their circuitry is still preserved. Uh, to discuss the future, deep brain stimulation is not yet determined to be effective in improving cognition in the early stages of Alzheimer's disease. While all of the studies found the surgery and the stimulation of DBS to be safe and tolerable for patients, its efficacy in improving cognition and memory is not consistent. Increased cerebral metabolism and decreased rate of brain atrophy, atrophy were strongly correlated with deep brain stimulation, showing that there are some factors worth researching in the future. 
The studies reviewed included randomized controlled trials, clinical trials, and one case report. While they provided an educational insight to the biological effects of uh, both Alzheimer's disease and DBS, they were limited by size. All of the studies assessed had contained less than 50 patients. Additionally, when trying to include people with early Alzheimer's disease, it is possible to include those who don't actually have Alzheimer's pathology. The use of PET scans and MMSE scores uh, are used to determine typical Alzheimer's metabolic patterns, and human error in assessing these results could be a factor in results. One solution could be to attempt deep brain stimulation in those with mid to late Alzheimer's disease and look at the efficacy of reversing um, later stage dementia. Further research regarding deep brain stimulation uh, treatment for Alzheimer's ought to be done despite the lack of consistent cognitive improvement, as increased cerebral metabolism and decreased atrophy have been correlated to deep brain stimulation at the fornix, it would be worth looking into how or why these improvements did not uh, translate to memory and cognition. Current Alzheimer's disease treatment should not change until there is a stronger association between DBS and cognition. And through these studies, other possible avenues can be explored and assessed further to hopefully reach an effective treatment for Alzheimer's disease. Thank you so much for listening.